Today's damaged card comes from a viewer named Brandon. This is a copy of Zelda, and we're going to get to repairing it in a second. just want to point out this awesome sticky note. I'm going to hang on to this forever. I'm going to put it on my wall. When you guys send me stuff like this, I really do treasure it. Some stuff is too personal to share on camera, but these small little notes like this often make my day, and I really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you so much for this sticky note. I'm going to hang it on my wall for sure. So let's dig into the damage behind this cart. According to Brandon, he said that this game had orange juice spilled on it. He cleaned it up, and to a surprise, it booted and worked just fine. However, after some time, the game started showing signs of not booting and not having the ability to load save games or start new games. He thought it was the, ga the Game Boy battery. He replaced that, and it still didn't fix it. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we're working with. I'm really surprised that this thing sat in orange juice, an acidic liquid, and still turned on. So I'm, I'm expecting maybe a damaged etch or two, uh, or just needs to be reflowed. Who knows? But the PCB itself looks surprisingly nice for being soaked in orange juice. He did send pictures of the damage, and I'll put them on the screen right now so you can see it. And you couldn't tell. Like, it is it's really nice. It's in really nice condition for the damage it did have. Um, but that being said, it's still not working, so we're going to have to deep dive on this one and figure out why. So it should boot without the battery, I think. So let's see if we can get lucky here. He said, he, he said it was uh, inconsistently booting. So that's somewhat of a good sign, the fact that it says Nintendo on it. So it's trying to boot, but it's not actually booting. You see if we turn the Game Boy on without a game? Get that black bar. So the game itself is kind of working, and I think it can be saved. So let's go ahead and dive in. I think the best course of action would be to start by removing all of the components and see if there's any damage underneath the chips, because if he's if it was submerged in orange juice and he did clean it, um, odds are he didn't remove the chips to clean underneath them, and they could hide some damage, such as damaged traces or vias or whatnot. Everything on top, though, looks really good. I mean, even the contacts look really nice. Uh, I wouldn't guess that this was soaked in orange juice by any means. So let's go ahead and remove all of these components, put them in a tray to keep track of them, and see if we can see anything underneath the microscope camera that I finally got set up. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's remove all the components from this PCB. I'll start by removing the smaller components using my soldering iron, then I'll work my way up to the bigger chips using the hot air station. Now that we removed all the parts, you can see that there is a lot of black gunk where the chips would be. This is probably why the cart isn't working. My guess is this is leftover orange juice that had enough time to sit underneath those chips and just slowly eat away at the copper. Let's clean what we can using isopropyl alcohol, then we can remove the solder to see what we're working with.
I'm using a surgical blade to scrape away some of the gunk. I got through the solder mask, and just as I suspected, there is no copper underneath it, which means the orange juice ate it. And that's something I never thought I would have to say. Thanks to the efforts of Brandon cleaning this cart, there really isn't that much damage. And now for my favorite part, we're going to repair all the damaged traces using 30 gauge wire. Some of the damaged traces led to test points, which are technically pointless for gameplay, but this may be of help to someone in the future, and since we're inside this cart, let's just go ahead and repair them anyways. With a few broken traces repaired, we can now go ahead and solder on the chips, caps, and the one resistor. These last two damaged vias lead to test points. Again, they're not needed for gameplay, but let's just go ahead and repair them anyways. Alright, so all the flux residue is now gone from the PCB, so let's go ahead and slap it back inside of its case and see if we can get the game to boot. Now the issue was the game wasn't booting and it wasn't allowing for a new game. So let's go ahead and slap it in. Alright, so that's a good sign, booting right away.
and we can start a new game, but there's no battery installed, so we're not going to be able to save it. So I'm going to try... Let's see if the game will boot with just half of the case. And it does. So now, what I'm going to do is solder in my bench power supply to simulate a 3-volt battery that will act as our save supply. Because I don't have any batteries on hand for this kind of stuff, so... It would help if my iron was actually turned all the way up. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try to solder in my bench power supply leads. Make sure it's set to 3 volts. Yes. So now let's go ahead and turn it back on. And create a new game. I've never played this game a day in my life, so I have no idea. And what we're testing here is just to make sure the game will load our save file after we turn the Game Boy off. I'm not too sure if there would be like an actual save point, um, so let's go ahead and kill it. Turn it back on and see if our save file is still there. Should be, because we're acting, we're using the bench power supply to simulate a battery, so it should be there. And if it is, then we know the game cart is fully restored. And there it is, king, right there. Cool, so the game cart is fully restored and can now be played. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my bench power supply. And turn it back on. It should be gone. And it's actually still there. Weird. My bench power supply is off. I don't get that. Let's try this. Bench power supply is off. It could have still been outputting a small voltage though, so. And there it goes, now it's gone. Alright, weird little glitch. So the game is fully restored, so let's go ahead and clear coat it to protect it from further damage and install a new battery. So now that we have a fresh battery installed, let's go ahead and test it out one last time just to make sure that the battery actually works. I didn't test it with a meter and to make sure the game itself still works after messing with it again. Just want to make sure everything's good before I send it back to the owner.
Alright, so let's go ahead and start a new game under King. Let's just do just enough to make sure the game saves. I don't know at what point it saves, so let's go ahead and kill it. Disconnect the carts and see if the load is or the save file is still there. Not the load file. It's it's late and words are hard. I don't know how to talk. Alright, and King is still there, so this Game Boy game is fixed and ready to be played by the owner. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, please be sure to subscribe. Also, if you have anything yourself that you would like me to repair, check the description of this video for my email address, and from there we can coordinate getting your device and fixing it, game, cart, whatever. doesn't really even matter. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.